Good afternoon sailors, Ben here and welcome back to the channel. I am here in rainy Fort Lauderdale and today we're going to be continuing our series on owner version catamarans under $300,000 with a yacht which is quite different from the Leopard 38. And the first way in which it's different is that unlike the Leopard 38, this model is quite easy to find here in North America and the Caribbean because as a matter of fact, it was manufactured in the US. I'm of course talking about the Manta line of catamarans. The second way in which this uh, yacht is different is that despite it measuring 42 feet at the waterline, it is not very similar to what you're going to find with most 42 foot catamarans if you've been to a boat show within the last year. We're talking about a design which dates from about 1995. It's an Eric LaRouge design, come to think of it, but his priorities were uh, not the same as your average charter catamaran these days. I could sit here and hash out the details, but I think the best way to show you would just to be to well show you. So, with all that said, let's go aboard. So this is Imagine, she's a 2005 Manta 42 owner version. I'm here on the starboard hull, looking at the sugar scoop. Uh, this was originally a 40 foot design that was lengthened to 42 feet at the waterline, give it that extra length. Look at the underside of the bridge deck. It has that kind of distinctive curve, so you can always see when you uh, you see a Manta catamaran at an anchorage, they're pretty easy to recognize. As well as they have this kind of oversized set of davits. Helps hold up the end of the hardtop. And on the davits you also have some storage space and this can also uh, double as kind of a bench. You know, you sit up there. The cockpit on this yacht is more reminiscent of the Lagoon 380. You just kind of have all around seating, small table. gas grill, You've got your life raft on the back, as well as a radar mast. Look at the helm station, offset helm. The owner has gone with some Garmin electronics, You've got your chart plotter, autopilot wind indicator, your engine throttles, and all of the lines are led back via this kind of organizer to the clutches and a Harkin self-tailing winch. So you can control them all pretty easily from inside this enclosure. We'll go inside first today. So making our way inside, you have an L-shaped seating area with a dinette. Now one thing, uh, one main downside to the Manta catamarans is that there is a bit of a height constraint within the salon. So if you're a real tall guy or gal, you know, 6'6", six, 6'5", six, six, this may not be the boat for you. I'm 6'2", and I'm just sort of barely brushing up against the liner, so keep that in mind if you're looking into this model. We do have fridge and freezer combo, pretty easy to access. Navigation station as well as electricals. Galley up configuration, propane stove, dual basin sink, microwave, cabinetry for all your pots and pans. There is supposed to be a foul weather lock a locker for your foul weather gear, I believe. And she is an owner version, so as we make our way into the starboard hull, we will find not the owner suite because the owner suite is located in the porthole. On most catamarans it's starboard, but I guess they just did things a little differently back then. So you have your aft guest stateroom, perpendicular bunk, pretty good lighting in here. Storage lockers, small seat, as well as a kind of rack for your library, all your marine manuals or whatnot. This has, she has a shared passageway head. On a design like this, that's pretty standard. You wouldn't have a kind of separate ensuite head. You have your shower, and this is kind of a, more of a proper wet head, so everything here is just sort of designed to get wet. Nice big mirror. And toilet. Forward stateroom.
So it has a washer dryer combo. It's again, not the most common, but if you're a full-time liveaboard, certainly a nice thing to have. Now we'll make our way into the actual owner suite. <laughs> Again, more storage racks. The owner's berth, nice and wide. Well as the owner's head. Now on the outside of this boat is where I think perhaps the more interesting features are located. So as we make our way forward, you notice you have running backstays on either side of the rig. We come up to the first unusual feature of this boat, which is that of a self-tacking boom, as you can see on the end here, which is attached to a Hank-on jib. Now most catamarans use roller furling jibs, however there are some reasons you might prefer a hank-on jib, a uh, roller furling jib. Has more parts, you know, more things to potentially break or go wrong, and a uh, hank-on jib is really just sort of dead simple. You can't really screw them up. So, while it's not the most uh, common design, there are reasons to prefer it. Here you have a nice mantis anchor, as well as nice really wide bow seats. You have a split trampoline, and I'm not too sure what material these trampolines are made of, but they are very soft, not too springy, but nice and comfortable. We'll make our way onto the hard top, but before we do that, you will notice one thing about this uh, manta in particular is that most mantas have kind of shutter shades, is what I like to call them, over the windows, but the owner has opted to remove those and go for snap-on shades instead. So if you want to let in more light, if you're in a colder climate, that is one advantage. On top of the hard top, we find perhaps the second unusual feature of this boat, which is a self-furling boom. Typically, you only find these on larger uh, models like the Leopard 48, but you can put them on any catamaran you wish. And as I said, I think that this boat was mostly set up for uh, shorthanding with the self-tacking jib and whatnot, and with a self-furling boom, you don't have to worry about having someone, you know, come up here onto the hard top and stuff the mainsail into the stack pack. Self-furling self masts aren't uh, really a thing on catamarans, so use booms instead, which I think is a good idea. I don't really like self-furling masts. They're not as easy to reef compared to self-furling booms. Take a look at the rig. We'll come down here. Have your windlass, which can also be controlled remotely from the cockpit. There's a switch for it. Grab rail on the side. And being that this boat is a little old school, it uses, I suppose, Norseman mechanical fittings. So you don't need to use swage fittings if you want to swap out your shrouds. I don't know how many people at this point uh, they're necessarily concerned with that, but do you have a really nice sturdy enclosure? Pretty good visibility as well. And that is Imagine, as always. I don't have a SoundCloud, but feel free to like, subscribe for more videos, and thank you for watching.